This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Also, make sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, available only on YouTube. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Westwood for the holiday edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Dave Marcus, pleased to be joined by Allison Taylor. Hope everything's going well for you. A lot of things are going well for UCLA, especially on the women's sports side. UCLA, always a powerhouse in women's sports. And we're going to visit with a couple of the top programs on campus today. Before we meet our first guests, let's take a look at the upcoming events. UCLA Swimming has just completed the winter portion of their schedule. That is basically their preseason, and they're just around the corner from getting and going for real up at the Speaker Aquatic Center. We're pleased to be joined by a pair of seniors who are looking forward to big years, Andrea Rigel and Rachel Godfred. Thanks for joining us on Bruin Talk. Thank you. Rachel, how's it going? Your team did very well at the meet down in Austin, Texas to close out the winter schedule. Yeah, it was a really good meet. We all went and had some good swims, and we're just ready to get into some winter training and get some more really good training on the way to get us for the rest of the season. Andrea, we talked about it being the holiday season. What's the challenge for being an athlete who basically has the season coming up right after the holidays? Yeah, we don't very get don't get that much time at home uh, over the break because we're here training and uh, working on uh, getting in some more hard work and then getting to bond as a team as well. So it's actually a really good time, uh, even though we don't get that much time at home. Uh, but it's also it's a really fun time for the season. Yeah. Rachel, Andrea just mentioned that the holiday break is a great time for you guys to get some bonding as well as get the physical work in in the pool. Swimming is often thought of as an individual sport. So tell us a little bit about how team chemistry plays a huge role in collegiate swimming. Most people just think, oh, so-and-so won her race, that's great for her. But how does it play into the team aspect? You know, we're really actually a very close team. We spend a lot of our preseason um, with a lot of bonding. And ultimately, we cheer on each, all of our, each other's races and really get each other going. So um, team chemistry is a huge, huge part of our team. Um, and without being able to cheer each other on at practice and really motivate the rest of the team, you wouldn't have those individual swims that are so good. So you really need each other um, to push each other. We talked about the team aspect of your training, but over the holidays you're going to have to be training even though you're home with your families. What's the training like, Andrea, when you're away from your team? Um, it's kind of difficult, but it's also fun getting to go back home and seeing all your old friends that you haven't seen in a while and uh, getting to train with some of the younger kids who they all look up to you and they're like, oh my gosh, these big college swimmers. But um, 
So it's kind of difficult being away from your team, but uh, it's nice we get a little time at home. But uh, yeah, so always good to come back here uh, and get uh, our time together again as a team after our 10 days at home. So. You're a local from Laguna Beach. Uh, Rachel, you're from Mercer Island, Washington. So when you go back, go back home, it's pretty exotic. Somebody from UCLA coming back to the community, isn't it? Yeah, people are pretty excited. Not that many people go out of state, or at least to UCLA at least. And um, so it's always fun to come back home. And yeah, like Andrea said, the club swimmers are always really excited to have more college kids there. And I mean, practices are definitely different at home than here. There's like a ton of kids per lane and everyone's just like really kind of all over the place and you come back here and everyone's way more focused and so it's definitely a difference but um, a lot of fun too. So here it's swimming and there it's water polo. <laughs> <laughs> You're a senior. Tell us about your decision to come to UCLA uh, four years ago. Um, I've always liked UCLA. I've always liked California. I have family um, in California and I just really wanted to um, be part of this whole program. I like the fact that um, academics and school were both just, you know, a huge part, or sorry, academics and swimming um, were both a really big part. And um, I just wanted to have it have both, yeah. Andrea, we're talking about how Rachel came farther away from home to come to UCLA. What about you? What made you decide to stay more local? Do you go home and see your family a lot? Do they come out and support you at the meets? What made you decide to stay closer to home? Yeah, uh, my mom actually went here, so that was also like one of the reasons why I initially looked here. And um, I just like remember on my recruit trip, I felt like I was already part of the team. So that whole aspect and the athlete, the, the academics, just you can't get a better combination. And. Uh, I do get to go home pretty often, which is really nice. And my parents are at all of our meets, so I'm, I'm like my parents. And so it's uh, I'm really lucky in that regard. And you know, I I'm more of a homebody, so I was not looking to go far away. So this was just the perfect uh, place for me. <laughs> You both swim challenging combinations of events. Andrea, you swim the back and the medley, um, and Rachel, you swim the free and the fly. I don't know how anybody can swim the fly, but <laughs> when did you realize that you had a, a particular knack for that specialty? Um, actually, my senior year of high school, um, I'd never even swam the 500, I mean, had barely swam the 500 free before, and my coach decided to put me in it for our state meet, and I ended up dropping a ton of time and got really, really, fast in that and so um, when I came here that was actually one of my top events that I had no idea that I was even good at so I started really training so that's more of a kind of distance-ish event um, so I started training a lot more distance which I had never really done before so that was definitely different but definitely helped I dropped a lot of time freshman year and um, throughout the years so um, definitely kind of the new training and really really kicking it down Andrea, as a backstroke specialist, do you have to put extra sunscreen on your face? <laughs> no, uh, well, not, I'm, I don't know if that would make that big of a difference, <laughs> but um, uh, maybe it would help my goggle tan. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I, backstroke is just kind of something that f has always felt, I've always felt better on my back for some reason, like I can hold my line and I like being on my back. Well, and that's a really that's a really hard point. I mean, you've got to hold your line. You got to the shortest distance between yeah. two points is a straight line. How do you know that you're going straight when you're on the backstroke? It's kind of after doing it for so long, you just kind of have this awareness of where you are in the water and in the pool. So it's. I don't, I don't even think about it anymore. <laughs> Andrea, also you swim the relay as we were talking about earlier. How do you practice a relay? Because you have to swim with other girls, but it's not like every day in practice the four of you can hop in the pool and all swim together. How do you practice your relay and your leg and meshing with those other girls? Yeah, well, we're, since we're together all the time training, um, I don't know, it's, the relays are always changing too sometimes, so we do get a good, you get to like, feel uh, feel out how each girl is going to perform so it's like I don't we <laughs> I don't really I don't really know how to explain it it's okay. <laughs> yeah. and we practice our relay starts a lot um, before big meets and stuff because the timing is really important like this if you're you know one one hundredth fast you'll get disqualified so you know you really have to practice and some people have long strokes into the wall short strokes so like like Andrea said we swim with each other a lot so we know what people's strokes are like at the end so um, you can kind of base that timing off that. The relay is always a fan favorite. Yeah. I mean, the anticipation when somebody's coming to the wall and the next swimmer is about to jump in. Do you have any idea what's going on in the lanes around you as you're swimming the relay? Um, 
Sometimes, yeah, especially if you're the one that's about to dive in and you can tell that it's a really close race and like it's just up to you, that type of thing. Um, it gets you really excited. You can tell the fans are really excited and you're just ready to go. So, yeah. Let's talk about the Pac-12 this season. You're going to have some great meets. Uh, how do you think the Bruins are going to fit in in the Pac-12 race this year? I think we definitely, I mean, we've already gone against Arizona's, both Arizona's, and beat both of them. So um, we're ahead of where we were last year. They both beat us last year. So um, we definitely have a strong team this year and are ready to take on the rest of the Pac-12. Andrea, you guys finished fifth in the Pac-12 last year, and I'm sure you're always trying to move up, always trying to bump up that, that fourth spot, third spot. What are you guys going to do this year to ensure that you're, not, that you're moving forward instead of moving backwards? Well, we already have moved forward a lot from last year, and um, we've just changed. Our team dynamic has is completely different than last year. We're a much closer team, very tight. We're um, just this kind of motivation that's coming from inside to want to do better, and everyone is on the same page. So we're really excited for the rest of the season, and uh, we're not going to put any limitations on ourselves. So uh, just want to move forward from last year. Yeah. Rachel, you have a stretch in mid-February where you've got Stanford, Cal, and USC three weeks in a row, obviously a key point in the season. As you focus toward the upcoming meets, are you just focusing on your individual? Do you look ahead? Do you, do you size up the schedule as you look forward? Um, I mean, ultimately, in the back of your head, you're kind of looking ahead, but um, it's really important just to focus on each practice, each day, like improving the small things, your technique, and um, it'll come together in the end. So, I mean, yeah, we're just trying to take it one day at a time, and it'll all come together. I want to talk about the timing as you reach for the wall. I mean, that, that is such a, an important part of the, its fingertips sometimes, mm -hmm. winning and losing. What's your awareness as you're going into the wall? How, do you time your stroke? How far out from the wall do you time your stroke? Um, I mean, we practice a lot of like builds and finishes, and I mean, that is a really important part. And so um, we do time it from, I'd say, a few strokes in, and we always practice you know, keeping your head down, not taking a breath into the wall. Um, the little details that are really important. Andrea, as a backstroker, you're not looking at the wall as you're yeah. coming in. So uh, have you, you know, smacked your hand on the top yeah. of the pool deck? Um, well, no, because they have the flags up oh. <clears throat> at five yards. So that helps you judge um, how many more strokes you need to take because you can count from there. So yeah, I've never. I've only hit my head if there's no flags and I forgot. <laughs> I think the flip turns look like the hardest part personally, but that's beside the point. I want to talk to you guys just a little bit about how points are awarded in a swim meet. Our viewers probably don't know that much about how the points are awarded. So give us a little preview, a little bit of inside scoop into how teams win dual meets. Um, so first place gets nine points for, an in for individual races and then it goes four, three, two, one for uh, second through fifth. So you don't necessarily have to win every single um, race, but you need to have a uh, really good depth. So three people can score from each team, so you can't have four people or five people score all the points from one team. So for dual meets, it's um, really important to get three girls that you know can have a really good shot at scoring, obviously. so. It's more about having some well-rounded teams than just having one big superstar or something like that. Yeah. Well, the Speaker Aquatic Center is a brilliant place to watch an athletic event. The swim season is just around the corner. Check it out on UCLABruins.com and support the UCLA swimmers. Andrea, Rachel, thanks for joining us on UCLA Bruin Talk. Thank you. And we'll come right back for more Bruin Talk after this brief public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Hi everybody and welcome back to Bruin Talk. It is now time to honor our Student Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Markel Walker as our Athlete of the Week. In the women's basketball game against Loyola Marymount, Markel had 17 points, 10 rebounds, and 7 assists to lead five players into double figures. No number 19, UCLA secured the victory over Loyola Marymount with an 86-66 end score. 
Walker, standing six foot one, used her height to dominate in the paint. When not shooting, she was helping her teammates by sending quick balls for fast breaks. Congratulations, Markel, and good luck with the rest of the season. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. One of the great programs at UCLA is women's soccer, always a powerhouse, and the Bruins were very competitive again this year, making it to the NCAA quarterfinals where they fell to Stanford. The Bruins have a couple of sophomores who are going to be a part of the program for a long time, and we're really happy to have them with us today. Caprice Didasco and Abby Dahlkemper, welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Your season starts so early. You're one of the first teams that actually competes in August every year. Is it hit you that the season's finally done? Um, it's starting to, um, so we can't do anything for the next two weeks, so a bunch of us are just kind of like, what do we do? Like, we're trying to play small side pickup, like, with each other already, and the season has just ended, so it has kind of hit us, but we're in a busy time with finals and stuff, so we're just kind of focusing on that. Caprice, this year the Pac-12 network showed a lot of UCLA soccer. It's more exposure than your sport has ever had in the mainstream media. It's got to be nice for people to actually watch your matches. Yeah, it's like definitely nice, especially for family members back at home, like her being up north and me from being Hawaii so far away, our parents can't really come and watch, so it's very a great opportunity for our family to be able to watch if they can't be weren't able to fly down here and watch. Now we've got a midfielder and a defender with us, so we're well protected here. Um, Caprice, you said that Messi is your favorite player. Uh, he's a lot of people's favorite player. Tell me what you <laughs> like about the game of Messi and how you try to style your game after him. Um, well, first, I like he's like a very hard worker. Um, his foot skills are like amazing, and he doesn't do anything too fancy. I mean, he just makes everyone his like first priority is always to make everyone else look good and help his team out. So he's not a ball hog, and he's willing to do the dirty work too. <laughs> Abby, this year you were named Pac-12 Player of the Week twice throughout the duration of the season. How does that feel to be honored by the conference and a super competitive conference at that? It feels good, but um, I think the award more or less like speaks for the whole defense as like a back four. Our defense um, <clears throat> collectively this season was um, unbelievable. We worked well together. Um, we helped each other out, and we I don't I don't even know how many shutouts, but we had a bunch of shutouts and stuff. So um, I think those awards just went like to a, to the defense as a whole. You were both part of the number one recruiting class in the country in 2011. We mentioned you're both sophomores, so a lot of soccer ahead of you. How do you assess this past season? There, there were so many close calls. The loss to SC, a couple losses to Stanford. It looked like the Bruins had a chance to win all those. It was a case of almost. How does that spur you on toward next year? Um, I think we're all just like so hungry for next year already because um, we're losing three major like, really good seniors. But I think um, more or less the whole team is coming back together again next year. So I think that just like makes us want it more because we are so close and, and we definitely know that we can do it. And we know now like what it takes to make it to the quarterfinals and, and we hope to make it to the final four and hopefully the final someday. So. Caprice, as we've been mentioning, both of you are sophomores. How has your time here at UCLA changed your perspective on the game? I'm sure you've grown a lot both as a person as, and as an athlete since you've been here, but how has your outlook on the game changed? Um, well, first I came here as like a forward midfielder, and then my first practice, um, our coach put me in the back line defense, and for the first time I started freaking out. <laughs> so I learned, so ever since then I've been playing outside back, and um, I learned a lot and grew as a player in that position, especially playing at this high level, like collegiate level. And then just getting to know girls from like that are just as good as like everyone on the team competing for the same spots and starting positions is always because we come from club teams where we're always like the top athlete of like right. of our team and it's just hard. It's just always comp like competing every practice and every game for a spot on the like starting spot and it's just awesome and the team is just chemistry is just amazing. Abby, you are a defender and you mentioned the team aspect of the game. You were very modest when we talked about your player of the week selections, but normally the defenders really only get noticed when you get burned. Uh, tell us about the pressure of playing on the defense. It does put a lot of pressure on you. Um, they, I, they tend to only notice your mistakes, which kind of stinks, but I mean, just trying to do your job and help the team, at, team out and um, defense is all about like covering each other and just making sure that like we're not alone like defending um, so I mean I just 
kind of working together as a team helps. You, you really have to have a sense of chemistry, don't you, yeah. with the other you players on be, the back line? Especially on the back line, yeah, you need to be on the same page because um, you need to stay even with the line and the offsides and all that. So you definitely need to know each other's strengths and weaknesses and just kind of be on the same page. Caprice, obviously you have to be in great physical condition, especially the midfielders. You're back and forth all the time. What is your off-season workout program now? When do you start actually getting back and playing soccer or is, is there conditioning work? What do you do between now and next August? Well, that's the hard part. I mean, you always tell yourself like you're going to stay in shape to next thing, um, to next season. But I mean, we would need a little break because you're going to get a little burnt out. So um, we'll like take a little break, and then they'll give us the fitness packets over the winter break, and we'll just like slowly get back into it. And then when we get back in January, we'll have um, running and conditioning and weights to like our weight coach will schedule for us, and like we'll work out, and then we'll start up in August again. Abby, we're talking about your physical preparation that you've already started for next season. I want to talk about the mental and emotional side of playing a sport at the collegiate level. I know this past season, BJ Snow and his coaching staff put a real big emphasis on personal development and moving forward not as, only as an athlete but as a person. How do you think that translated into your game? Um, I think it was a hard transition for me I guess going into college um, just like with my confidence and like growing as a person because so many things are changing you're going to school you're meeting new people harder classes and just like practice every day and with the highest level of competition so it definitely was hard but I'm learning to adapt um, BJ and the other coaching staff has definitely helped a bunch so that's been good Caprice I want to talk to you a little bit about one of your past mentors maybe Sydney LaRue not only is she now an Olympian Olympian and a gold medalist at that but she was the number one overall draft pick in the WPS how does that motivate you to continue to carry on the Bruin legacy well um, it's act it's like so amazing that we had the opportunity to play with her at least one year and it's amazing just seeing that a girl just on our team is playing in the Olympics, scoring goals, top draft in the WPS league, and it's very motivating to us that it could be one of us one day, like, and it's like reachable. So it's awesome. Sydney LaRue just had two goals in a friendly against Northern Ireland. Oh, it must be awesome. crazy for you to see one of your teammates scoring twice. And just a couple weeks ago, she was out at practice with us. So it's it's so cool that she can come back and practice with us, and we can kind of hear about her experiences and and just makes us want it more. So. One of the great things about UCLA in the summer is that the, cause the English Premier League teams come out here a lot of times to train. What's it like seeing the top international players playing on your pitch? Yeah, it's so cool and it's nice because they redo our whole, f our whole field, so <laughs> get a nice field for next season. But um, yeah, so this past summer Real Madrid was on our field, so that was so cool. We saw Ronaldo and and all those other players, so it was it was amazing. It was really did cool. watching those players? I mean, I know your coaches work hard, but did, did watching those players teach anything about ball technique? We we didn't we really could, get. We couldn't really watch because oh. they like fenced up the. Okay. Fence. Yeah. So we just saw them when we were coming to practice. Yeah. So we just passed each other. So it was nice. We can imagine though how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. We talked about the women's professional league, and you know they're starting up some new teams in new cities. And it's got to be nice to know that there is a future for soccer players when you get out of college. Caprice, you thinking about going on to the next level? I think if I have the opportunity to play, I mean, I would love to play soccer for a living for a little bit. I mean, it's something I love, and um, especially with the new U.S. national team coach, the full team, um, it's a good opportunity to get seen if you if you had dreams to like play with the national team, the full team. So, as you look toward the future, junior year, you're going to be kind of role models now for younger players coming in. What are some of the things you learned in your first two years that you think you'll be able to pass on to make the transition easier? Um, I think how close our team together, or our team is together, um, really kind of, I want to carry that on to like the younger kids and, and how we all help each other out. And I think that these past two years, I couldn't have asked for better role models. Um, Sydney LaRue, Zykeia Bywaters, Jenna Richmond's going to have another year with us. So I just think the importance of just being like the best role model you can be to the younger kids and just helping them out because we were in those we were in their shoes like two years ago so we know how it is and we just want to make the transition as easy as possible. 
Caprice, we're talking about how you're going to help the younger players come together on the pitch. But what about off the pitch? You guys are roommates. You've got to be very close. How do you support each other once practice is over, once a game is over? Say you had a bad day. How do you help each other out? I mean, we definitely know each other like when we're in good moods or bad moods. And um, when we need, like, one of us need to pick me up, um, we'll, like, always help each other out. I mean, after a bad game, I mean, after, especially after the Stanford game, we're roommates, too, up in Stanford. And we knew we needed time to cool off after the game. But as soon as we got back to the hotel, like we talked about it and we talked to each other about like about the positives and negatives and what we can change for next season. And we just we move on and we're just I would love it. You know, it's the bounce of the ball. I mean, it's mm -hmm. the SC game. There were some crazy bounces in that game that didn't go UCLA's way. Do you let it go? How long does it take to let it go after a game like that? Well, definitely after the game, it's very like sad and it mixed emotions. And after the days go on and the DC team's training and see like the national championship game going on, it really sets in that your season's over and it's really sad and frustrating. But I mean, you just got to move on and think posit positively and just like think positive for the next season. Motivation for next year? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, it's really not too far away. Uh, August comes pretty quickly when we get around the corner of the year. So we wish you the best of luck next thank season. You. It's always great to follow UCLA women's soccer. And we look forward to great things. Caprice and Abby, thank, thank you for joining you. us. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us for UCLA Bruin Talk. Allison and I will be back next week with another great show. Until then, happy holidays and so long from Westwood.